This is it, Kevin. Don't get scared now. This is the Pestilence Set Dungeon Mastery Guide for the Necromancer. I'm going to show you how to do this and get your mastery achievement. And I'm not going to just go into the set dungeon blabbing like an idiot. I'm going to show you everything, every step of the way. I'm going to go through my skills. I'm going to go through the gear that you need, Can Ice Cube. Everything that you need to know to make this super easy. And it is super easy. Let's get straight into it. I'm hyped up on caffeine. Now, let's start off with the objectives first. Now, looking at our primary objectives here, number one, we hit enemies 150 times with empowered bone spears. This is going to be super easy because I'm going to show you how to tweak your necromancer in order to really be able to just smash everything in front of you, not take any damage, and you'll get that 150 objective so damn easy. The second one is don't take 400,000 damage. Again, we're going to avoid this really easy, and we're going to also take some precautions just in case you do get hit because you can definitely complete this without getting touched at all. Your, your, your damage will be zero, but if you do get hit, maybe you're a beginner to the Necromancer class, we're going to take some precautions we're going to get into all that now let us begin by looking at the skills we are using bone spear obviously with teeth now with teeth you get more projectiles happening so we're going to damage and kill more enemies in front of us blood rush with molting molting is useful to molt one corpse because we need corpses for this definitely but once we get started there ain't going to be no shortage of corpses believe me and we've got other precautions in place to make sure we got corpses available decrepify with borrowed time we're using devour and make sure you have the devouring aura rune there and that devours everything within that order around the necromancer super handy we don't have to worry about pressing any buttons command golem with flesh golem this is super important once we activate this wherever you have your mouse pointing to whatever area wherever the cursor is the golem will jump to that area and it'll collapse into a large pile of corpses this is most important to use at the start of the set dungeon reason being as soon as we collect the corpses we'll be able to develop our empowered bone spear and that's what this is all about we have to use empowered bone spear and it's going to be super easy with this flesh golem they'll get us started and then we'll just keep killing everything in front of us and then we'll just keep devouring corpses automatically with the aura and we we'll just keep moving through so the start is super important we have to collapse down our golem hit we'll get those that extra corpse boost at the beginning and straight away we'll develop those bone spears the empowered bone spears and then we just keep on moving around, baby. Keep moving through the set dungeon and kill all the monsters before the time runs out. Super easy. Now, last one here. I'm not using Land of the Dead. That's just because this is part of the setup that I was for my previous build. This is my actual setup for the Corpse Lance Necromancer. We don't need any more skills anyway. That's just in there for no reason at all. Don't need to worry about that. You don't have to have anything in the fourth skill slot. You really don't need anything at all. The passives I'm using, they're really not important to be honest with you. But Blood is Power, Final Service, Standalone overwhelming essence and this is just the setup for my corpse lands crusader the most important parts are going to be the gear making sure that we have six pieces of pestilence set and also a couple things that i put into canine's cube which makes this just goddamn easy mode it's ridiculous let's go check it out let's go check out the gear now the gear six pieces of the pestilence set as you can see there we've got the gloves shoulders the the head the helm the chest the pants and also the boots now other gear that i've got equipped but as long as you have six pieces of pestilence it doesn't necessarily matter what the other items you have are none of them are required the traveler's pledge and the compass rose is a nice combination as always so that's what i have equipped there i've got crispin sentence again we're going to be doing so much damage here we don't need to slow enemies and get more damage out of it to multiply the damage out that we output it's not necessary but you know, if you, you're built for a Corpse Lance build, which is the strongest Necromancer build to push JRs this season, then you can just make the adjustments like I'm going to mention now, and you'll just fly through this set dungeon super easy. I've got Ancient Path and Defenders as the braces there. Dainty's Binding. I'll be decrepifying a little bit, but again, nothing's going to really come that close to us because we're going to be bone spearing and killing everything in front of us, devouring the corpses and moving through. But just to show you what I have equipped so you, you get a rough idea, that's what I have. 
have. And I got last time over there in the off hand. Now, what can be important is the gems, particularly this one here, Molten Wildebeest's Gizzard. Make sure you have that equipped. What that does is, after you don't take damage for 4 seconds, you gain an Absorb Shield for 200% of your total life force per second. So, again, what I'll, the part, one of the objectives is... Do not take 400,000 damage and what this does is that this will absorb some of the damage that you actually take if you are unlucky enough to take some damage in this set dungeon. It's very easy to avoid it but this is definitely a safeguard to make sure that you actually absorb some damage and again you're going to fly through this and you, you won't take that 400,000. It'll make, it'll make avoiding 400,000 damage that much easier just as a safeguard. Put that in there. The other gems I'm using just to mention them. Zay's Stone of Vengeance and Bane of the Trapped. But again, it's not that super important for this, but the Molten Wildebeest Gizzard is definitely helpful for this. Now, very importantly, let's look at Kenai's Cube. This is going to just make it easy mode. I swear, easy mode. The weapon I'm using is Maltorius's Petrified Spike. And what this does is Bone Spear now costs 40 Essence and deals 700% increased damage so the bone spears with the teeth rune is going to be doing 700 percent increased damage every time we use it and when it's empowered it's gonna just pretty much kill everything in front of us one shot it the armor requiem Sarah plate this is definitely a nice addition if you have it if you've got it in canice cube devour restores an additional 100 percent essence and life in addition when Devour restores essence or life above your maximum, the excess is granted over 3 seconds. So, as we're shooting Bone Spears, we're going to be using our essence up. As enemies die, with our Devour aura, as we devour the corpses, we're going to regain all of that essence and life. So, super handy there. We can't run out of essence and we're going to heal ourselves as well as we kill things. In Jewelry, Convention of Elements, not that important, but it increases our damage even more so what i was talking about as soon as we get to this set dungeon is with this golem here you want to aim for a spot so let's say it's there and then we walk over there we devour all those corpses and you can see over here empowered bone spear so we've already got eight empowered bone spears and all these projectiles that's one that's just one as you can see we've still got seven so all of those extra teeth are going to hit more enemies do more damage and guess what we can do it every single time because there we go, we still got four. Doesn't matter how many projectiles there is, you only use one, one of those buffs. So, you know everything you need to know, and this is the most detailed guide you will find on YouTube, on the internet. Everyone else just jumps in there and talks a lot of crapola. Not your creepy uncle, Bunny13. He explains everything step by step, so now you know exactly what I'm using, what's in Canoise Cube, the skills. You're ready. Now, we open up our map. We want to go to Act 3. And we want to head down to the Keep Depths Level 3. And once we appear here in the Keep Depths Level 3, I've already made a bit of a clearing here for everyone and make it a bit easier. You want to make your way down to where you would fight GOM. And it is a ran randomly generated map. So this one's nice and easy. Sometimes he's a lot further out. And it's a nice long hallway stretch. So when you get this stretch, you know you're coming up to GOM. So just in there, and boom, the portal appears there. We've already gone through the objectives. Time to sweep the leg, Johnny. Let's go. So, command that golem. Devour and get those empowered bone spears. And then bone spear. And as you can see, look at that. Everything just dies. Instant kill. And as we run over those corpses, so make sure that you run over the corpses. It'll automatically devour it with your devour order. And now look how many bones, empowered bone spears we have. We've got like 50 already. <laughs> so we can't even run out of the empowered bone spears. And I'm spamming them pretty generously as you can see. Don't go ballistic and like use it for nothing. Make sure the enemies are there. And then use your bone spear. And time is not a factor. This is probably the easiest set dungeon ever. Now the guides that I did for set dungeons were quite a while ago and some of them have been updated to make them a bit easier some of them were quite challenging but this one god damn it's so easy and look at that every time we actually devour the corpses it also uses bone spear as well man this is just 
Overkill is the word, but it doesn't take long to set it all up. If you've just got those two items that I have in Can Ice Cube, you're not going to have a problem. And then all you just need is the six pieces of Pestilence. And the Golem there, I, I'm using, I don't really need. I've got a hundred Empowered Bone Spears at the moment. I'm getting more Bone Spears that I can actually use. So, so easy. Look at this. And how much damage have we taken? Zero. Zero K. Zero K, everyone. Zero K. Objective 1 completed. Now we just have to avoid the damage. And we're done. And we have to kill all the monsters before the time runs out, which we're going to do. 42. Uh, 37. We got it. We got it. 35. And this is the mastery. Ma guide to completing your mastery achievement. I'm not going to do no sort of ordinary how to do the set dungeon without the mastery achievement no chance your dear old uncle shows you how to do mastery there it is there it is so seriously probably the easiest set dungeon that you will ever play i think just see how we just breeze through that we did it in just over two minutes our target time was five minutes to kill all of the enemies so Set Dungeon is all about preparation. Some of them definitely have a bit of uh, gameplay challenging factors about them. But this one, just so easy. There you go. Don't forget, if you enjoy watching your creepy uncle, you can always subscribe. It means everything to me. But if you don't want to, even more importantly, you can come back and visit. Because I get lonely, I get creepy, and I get crazy. Come back.